I thought we would warm up a little bit together, just get your voice going, work on vocal technique a little bit. Um, and then there's a hymn that's common between the two cathedral services that will be broadcast this Sunday. That's hymn number 819, This Is My Father's World. Many of you in the cathedral choir already know it or know your parts, but I thought I would just use that as a little bit of repertoire that we could sing together and actually quickly go over the parts for those of you who don't know it at the end of this video, uh, just to give you something else to sing. So look forward to that, but for right now, if you wouldn't mind, take a little moment and stretch. I'm not going to stand up because I would go out of the frame of the video, but if you just lift your arms up over your head, roll your shoulders a bit, take some deep, slow breaths and think about that breath support. Roll your shoulders the other way, still breathing very controlledly. A little bit of twisting side to side. I'm actually quite excited to use this lovely house that my wife and I live in to make some of these recordings for you. We've got a great piano right here as well, which is a great, uh, nicer instrument than what we have in the uh, choir room at the moment. But uh, something you may notice as you uh, listen to these videos is we are right on hunting the pike. So. You're gonna hear traffic going by now and then, waking up your face, and then just pulsing on a V a little bit with me, really get that diaphragm jumping. Ready? <laughs> then on a Z. <laughs> if you can roll your lips a little bit, how about just a little bit of sliding up and down a fifth here with a, with a lip trill like this. <laughs> Two of them in a row at that speed, so you're going to want to take a nice gradual breath. Breath. I'll say one, two, and you breathe in on three and four. One, two. going whether I can play the piano while I'm singing or whether you can't hear me at all but we'll work that out with the audio settings as we learn um, so if you're looking for a little kicks with your diaphragm down below your ribcage there bump, 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 really bouncing that nice sharp gesture by the biggest breathing muscle you've got ready and someone who shares a building with other people, um, I, I, I hope you've warned them about this, and I hope, uh, I hope you can set up a situation where you can do a bit of singing. Singing, um, you know, I've talked to a bunch of members of the Cathedral Choir who've had to take a, a break for uh, physical health reasons, whether that has to do with their throat and their singing, or whether it has to do with something else in their lives, like a surgery or something, and when they come back, I hear over and over again this frustration at feeling like the voice has been somewhat lost. Um, there's a matter of patience in terms of slowly working your voice back, like any muscle. Actually, more, more sensitive than a lot of muscles, because it's a lot of little things there that you coordinate in order to sing. And when you don't use them for a while, it's harder to get them back in shape. I notice that with my trumpet playing. When I do a bunch of little muscles around my lips, it's not like keeping my biceps or my legs in shape for running. If I let the muscle tone on those go down, it's a much longer journey to getting that back. And I know you, I know you love singing and that you've probably been through that journey many times in your life, but I just, if you can keep singing through this on a regular basis, at least weekly, sing along with the hymns on Sunday morning if that isn't too weird for you, uh, at least that's something we're trying to invite people to do. If you turn the volume way up, sometimes that helps. 
um, give you a little bit more of an environment to sing along with. But yeah, a lot of things to figure out there, but I really hope to keep you singing. And, and if you're coming back from not having sung for a while, or if you're thinking to join our electronic cathedral choir for these projects, just try to be really patient with yourself, but really do these exercises. You know, everyone's voice is different, so I'm going to go higher and lower than you can necessarily go. But um, those of you who do cathedral choir regularly know that when you reach too high, you stretch yourself a little bit, and then you can just drop out or drop down the octave and do it an octave lower to keep yourself singing for a bit. Let's do uh, let's do one more warm up, but nice and slow. I would like to do the uh, the one that goes. Try to take a nice slow breath. Remember, we're breathing for two beats. So I'll say one, two, and then you want to go. And on each of those long notes, did you hear how I crescendoed? I leaned into my voice a little bit rather than sitting back. Uh, many of you have heard me say that before, but that's a really important part of the exercise. And if you need to breathe part way through, don't be, don't be ashamed about it. Take a good breath. If you're ever going to take a breath, always take a good breath and then come back in with good vocal technique as best you can. That's how we're going to learn along the way and sound even better when we come back from these online rehearsals and can start singing live again. All right, here we go. One, two, ready, and go. step this time on ooh. One, two, slowly. We'll do a few more of these in a moment. I just want to take a moment and give some credit in case one of my old mentors comes across this video. Uh, Professor Stephen Plank. I don't know if he wrote that exercise or if he got that from someone else, but he's the one I learned that from. When I was an undergraduate, we had a group called Collegium that met in the chapel um, at Oberlin College, a beautiful resonant space, and that was one of the warm-ups he did every single week with the choir. We would come, if you were a, a half a second late coming in the door, the choir is already singing that. You put your back bag down and start singing that exercise. So it has a, it has a, a soft spot in my heart. It brings back great memories. And also, it's just a really great exercise for working on line, working on breath support. Gives you a lot of opportunities for that, even if you find yourself breathing partway through because it's too slow for your breath support as it stands at the moment. Let's do a few more of those. Where were we? I think C sharp major. Three, one, two. Ah. Oh. So that's okay. If you want to really drop the octave, it'll be too low at first, maybe. But uh, sopranos and tenors, I want to make sure we keep going a little bit. So there's an opportunity to stretch yourself if you want to. Where was I just there? That was D major, so here is E flat major. actually a good vowel to notice this on because it's a harder vowel to sing high notes on for some people. And you want to make sure that you're making lots of space. Like 
raise your soft palate. That's the beginning of that feeling of a yawn or like you're smelling something pleasant. Let's do that one again and go. Every single scale is a little bit different. He set the bar high. I can't quite keep up. Let's do a few more of these. B, uh, E major. And ah. Oh. One more. I'm not going to warm you up too high because we're just working on a hymn tonight. Here is F major. And really think about that space and supporting your voice and making a nice, big, round sound at the top rather than anything thin. Let's go for ah still. One, two, and three. <laughs> a scan of the music for anything we're working on right now so you don't have to have a liturgy at home but if you do we're going to do hymn number 819 this is my father's world which is going to be the final hymn for both of the cathedral services broadcast this coming sunday both the 9 30 family service and the 11 o'clock adult service so uh hopefully you'll sing along or at least enjoy having worked on this piece and have something familiar to listen to if that's your preference thank you Say hi to Robin. Hi, Cathedral Choir. Her uh, keyboard skills are superior to mine when playing multiple parts, so I've asked if she would do us a favor and play it through. Um, yeah, I just want to encourage everyone to learn a part. Um, if you already know the melody um, and you're an alto tenor or bass, check out the alto tenor bass part. That's the obvious thing to do here. But even if you're a soprano, um, go ahead and learn another part, maybe the alto part if you like, or uh, just get to know the piece a little bit more. But also, everyone should learn the melody. Even if you, even if you are never gonna sing the melody in church, it's, it's wonderful to know other parts so that you can listen to them a little more actively in your head while you're singing along. I think that's part of what makes the beauty of singing in a choir is when you're familiar enough with the music that you can really bask in it rather than just be uh, blinded to your own part. So, I'm going to sing through on the first verse, I will sing the alto part. On the second verse, I will sing the tenor part. On the third verse, I will sing the bass part, just to give each of those new parts a chance of something to grab onto. And we're really just going to sing it straight through. If you already know the parts, just go for it. Um, if you don't, you know uh, what order I'm singing them in, in terms of what you can be listening out for in the voice part. Otherwise, it's just on piano. Uh, take it away. This is my father. 
Father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In rustling grass, I hear him pass. His voice is Have a good night.